How y'all doing? <laughs> I'm the Watchman, and this video right here is entitled The Loyalty of Mordecai That Saved the Nation. The Loyalty of Mordecai That Saved the Nation. Now, I was asked to do this lecture by a dear friend of mine named Tessa. And, uh, you know, she said, dude, she wanted me to do something on the story of Esther. And, of course, and I stress this to y'all anyone out there who wants me to speak or elaborate or just wants to hear what uh my opinion or what god may show me because god shows us all different things concerning the word you know from different angles and not saying that the way one person looks at a story is the 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 absolute right way you no know, that's the beauty of god's word is five people can read the same story and get five different things but if anyone wants me to elaborate on a story or hear my opinion on it just ask me and I'll do it just ask me and I'll do it I might not get to it that next day but I will do it and I will get to it but anyway uh, I, and so uh, like I said my friend Tessa asked me to do it on Esther so I, I prayed that same day and believe it or not uh, God said the story of Esther is really about Mordecai the unsung hero of of that whole story and the more I read so I reread the story and it was just like you know when when that little voice told me in prayer that the story of Esther is really about Mordecai and then I read the reread the story from that angle God shows so much. So that's what we're gonna that's what we're really gonna see. And and the thing that 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 hit me also that the Lord blessed to show me was Revelation 12 17. I know some of you are familiar with that, but um, let me read it. Revelation 12 17 reads, 
and the dragon, and this is talking about the last days in our damn time. It says, and the dragon was wroth, meaning angry. And the dragon was wroth with the woman. The woman is God's church. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Beloved, it was just shown to me by the Lord that the story of Esther and Mordecai is this. It is a type of this, except in old times. And so we're also going to look at that too. And like I said, Revelation 12, 17 is the foundation of the story of Esther. Let me read it again. And the dragon, the devil, was angry with the woman, God's true church, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So now let's get straight to the story of Mordecai and Esther. And first off, I'm going to give you some backdrop. Esther... Uh, Esther didn't have a mother or her dad. Mordecai was really Esther's cousin. But when Esther's dad died, Mordecai took her as his daughter. And Mordecai raised her. And that could be found in Esther. You should turn turn to the book of Esther. Turn to the book of Esther. And go to Esther chapter 2. And we're going to start. And we're going to read it at verse 7. And. We're going to be jotting through the story of Esther, but there's so much food here. There's so much food here. I hate to jot through it, you know, but maybe it might inspire you to, to read it again on your own. But Esther chapter 2 verse 7 says, and he brought up Hadassah, that is Esther, his uncle's daughter. Esther was Mordecai's uncle's daughter, so they were cousins. For she had neither father nor mother, and the maid was fair and beautiful, who Mordecai, when her father and mother were dead, took for his own daughter. So I just wanted to get this clear for those who didn't know. Mordecai raised Esther. Raised Esther. So in a way, that shows his loyalty already. His loyalty to his kindred and, and to his loved ones. But... To give you backdrop of the story, you know, King Ahasuerus, and for those who don't know, Ahasuerus, and this is in your history books, like I say, many people have, you know, we all have, you know, different names, and King Ahasuerus, the Persian, was also King Artaxerxes, he was King Xerxes, so if you're familiar with Artaxerxes, Ahasuerus just is, is just another name for Artaxerxes. So when I say King Ahasuerus, um, um, uh, it is King Xerxes. And Xerxes is short for Artaxerxes. For Artaxerxes. But anyway, so, so Ahasuerus, King Ahasuerus is having his banquet and he calls for his, his queen at the time, Vashti, to, to come and, you know, I guess, you know, she's disrespectful, got the big head, you know, and she tells him she ain't coming, you know, because they're in there drinking and whatnot, you know, probably one of the king's party and she didn't want to come. She probably had good reason to not come, but you, you, you go, that's, the, that's the king, you're, you're his queen. He's giving you this great honor above all the women in the known world. You know, Artaxerxes, King Ahasuerus, was king over the the known world, and 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 instead of just doing what he asked, she played hard headed, and he stripped her of her crown, basically, to make a long story short. So now he's fishing for another a queen to take her place. He's fishing for another queen to take her place, and Esther, who like like the word says, she was also very beautiful fair and beautiful and so Esther goes it's like they were having they had a whole bunch of virgins come and they were going to give six months of purification you know because the king the king didn't want to, he understood that some of them wasn't eating good because you know some might not have been rich so really it shows smart of Ahasuerus to give six months of what he called purification to where you know they get to eat good get the get their hair done, live right, and then he wanted to see how they look. He wasn't just gonna judge them straight off. 
you know he wanted to give him six months to get cleaned up good food you know then come back and then he would do his judging but anyway so Esther is one of these women and if you we, were still in chapter 2 and if you go down to verse 10 it says now she, even while she's one of these women she did not let no one know that she was a Jew this is very important she didn't let no one know that she was a Jew who told her not to so I'm, I'm and I'm gonna show you why I say that the story of Esther you know a lot of credit is just given to Esther and through her obedience through her obedience to God and to Mordecai she deserves some credit but the unsung hero the true hero if we can say hero of this story was Mordecai from the beginning to the end Esther was just obedient but Mordecai it was his loyalty and his courage let's 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 get to it that's, that's what we're gonna show and we already seen right off with him taking and raising Esther that already shows where his heart was at so who do you think she is like mentally Mordecai but chapter 2 verse 10 she's in so she's with these other virgins and she's in the six months of purification let's see chapter 2 verse 10 says Esther had not showed her people nor her kindred for Mordecai had charged her that she should not show it and Mordecai walked every day before the court of the women's house to know how Esther did and what should become of her he loved her like she was truly his own daughter like truly she was his own daughter and okay so so of course you know Esther was very beautiful and plus being you know a child of God and being raised by Mordecai as a child of God made her even more beautiful so of course she won she won but I want to read again I want to read again uh, this is after she won it says, verse 20, same chapter, Esther chapter 2, verse 20 says, Esther had not yet showed her kindred nor her people, as Mordecai had charged her, for Esther did the commandment of Mordecai, like as when she was brought up with him. And I read that to show, you know, it, God is reiterating to us who raised Esther, who, ra who made her a beautiful maiden. It was Mordecai, Mordecai. You know, some parents have beautiful children and raise them with neglect. And the child doesn't get shine to their fulfillment. You know, they, they don't feed the child, right? Don't get the child attention, time, and the child, you know, they, we as parents can dumb down our children. And we can uglify, if that's the word. Because no child is ugly. Don't get me wrong what I'm saying. But I'm talking about uglify inside which is the reflection of outside our, our, outward appearance is just a, a reflection of what's inside you know because here Vashti was beautiful the first queen but she was ugly inside so the king got rid of her but anyway but as we see right here God is reiterating that Mordecai raised her and she listened to the words of Mordecai now now this happened right after Esther was chosen we're going to read verse 21. In those days, while Mordecai sat in the king's gate, two of the king's chamberlains, Bigdan and Teresh, of those which kept the door, were wroth and sought to lay hand on King Ahasuerus. And the thing was known to Mordecai, who told it unto Esther the queen, and Esther certified the king thereof in Mordecai's name. And when inquisition was made of the matter, it was found out. Therefore, they were both hanged on a tree, and it was written in the book of the Chronicles before the king. So, right there, Esther even is showing honesty. She could have took the credit and said, this matter came before me. But now she said, Mordecai uncovered this and this, this. Her name was not even mentioned, and she was the one who let it be known to the king. And this was recorded, like I say, and this was recorded in the book of Chronicles for the king. Now... We're getting to the meat of the story. Now we're getting to the bread and butter. Chapter 3, we're going to start at verse 1. It says, After these things did King Ahasuerus promote Haman, the son of 
Hamed, Hameda, Hamedatha. That's almost right. Looks right. Hamedatha. Anyway, after these things, the king of Hasserus promote Haman, the son of Hamedatha, the Agite, and advanced him and set his seat above all the princes that were with him. And the king's servants that were in the king's gate bowed and reverenced Haman, for the king had so commanded concerning him. But Mordecai bowed not, nor did he reverence him. Here comes the controversy. Here comes Revelation 12, 17. Where it says, And the dragon was wroth with the woman, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, who keep the commandments of God, and hold to the testimony of Jesus. For it said, That were in the king's gate, everybody bowed and reverenced Haman, but Mordecai. Why did Mordecai? Because of the first commandment. Thou should not bow down and serve no other gods but me. But God. But God. So here, Mordecai is a representation of God's true church. And we see right off, he's keeping the commandment of God. He's, even though Haman was promoted and all this, and even though if we pay attention, in verse 2, it says, For the king had so commanded. This was a king commandment that the people should bow down and reverence Haman. And Mordecai still didn't budge and didn't give it a second thought. Verse 3, then the king's servant, which were in the king's gate, said unto Mordecai, Why transgressest thou the king's commandment? God even lets us know this was a king commandment. But Mordecai didn't even answer him. Why? Because, you know, he's going to keep God's commandment over the king's commandment. Okay. Now, remember, the devil hates anyone who keeps God's commandment. Verse 5, verse 5, chapter 3. And when Haman saw that Mordecai bowed not, nor did, did him reverence, then was Haman full of wrath. Remember Revelation 12, 17 said, and the dragon was wroth with the woman. This, we have to remember, beloved, the devil, all the devil wants is worship and reverence. He wants to be his God. Jesus in the book of John said three different times that calls the devil the prince of this world. This is the devil's world and everything that's being built up. Let's not be get it twisted from music to movies to how we live our lifestyle, how we're being trained and told to think. Everything is built up to give praise and worship to the devil. To where if you are a follower of God, and I've stressed this in other videos, if you are a follower of God, you are the oddity. You are like Mordecai. You are the only one in the king's gate who is not bowing down and giving reverence to the devil. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus. For Mordecai was the only one at the king's gate who would not bow, who would not bow down or reverence Haman, who at this time was a tool of the devil. So Haman is a representative of the devil, beloved, believe it or not. And Mordecai is a representative of God's true church. Of God's true church. Now because Mordecai wouldn't bow down. Let's look at verse 6. Chapter 3 verse 6. And he he thought to scorn. He thought scorn. To lay hands on Mordecai alone. For they had showed him the people of Mordecai. He was like what there's more? Wherefore Haman sought to destroy all the Jews. That were throughout the whole kingdom of Ahasuerus. Even the people of Mordecai. See he was doing the work of the devil right here. Because that's how you know the devil was directly behind Haman because the devil the Jews at this point in time just like the remnant of the the woman spoken of in Revelation 12 17 there's only a small remnant who keep the commandments of God and the testimony of Jesus just like today there's only a remnant who go by the actual Ten Commandments and have the testimony of Jesus but just like right here Haman was upset because the Jews were small. 
in, in this Persian kingdom. You know, the Persian kingdom stretched over the whole world. This was the whole known world. And the Jews were just a remnant. And so more Haman here is saying he wants to destroy this remnant. Why? Because they don't bow down. And they don't reverence him. And Mordecai, Mordecai, you know, all because Mordecai uh, would not bow down, nor reverence him. Then when he found out that there's more, just like Mordecai, who would not bow down or reverence him, reverence him. So now you see how that mirror, this is a mirror match of Revelation 12. Haman is representative of that dragon, of the devil, of the devil. Look what and look what he says. Look what he says to uh so Haman goes into the king. Now remember, he just got promoted right up under King Ahasuerus. He's the king's right hand man. So he goes he goes into Artaxerxes. I like calling him Xerxes. But he goes into Ahasuerus in verse 8 and says, And Haman said unto King Ahasuerus, There is a certain people scattered abroad and dispersed among the people in all the provinces of the of thy kingdom and look at this line right here and their laws talking about the ten commandments and their laws are diverse from all people <laughs> the ten commandments are different aren't they and their laws are diverse from all people you see his aim he's angry at their laws should we go back to revelation 12 17 those who keep, remember he's mad at those who keep the commandments of God and, okay back to verse 8 and their laws are diverse from all people neither keep they the king's laws therefore it is not for the king's profit to suffer them and to suffer means to, to permit them he's basically saying it, it don't profit you nothing to keep these people around so Ahasuerus hears this he got his right hand man telling him and and Haman says, even puts money into it and says, you know, after we kill them, we're going to take all everything they own and I'm going to bring into your treasury this big, large amount of silver. So you get the profit. You get you get these hard headed people out of your life and you get you get a little extra more change in your pocket. So the king was like, bet. It's a win win. So, you know, he gave the decree. And he gave Haman the ring, said, all right, go ahead, get it done. Write your letters to the other provinces. Let my men know, and and we'll have them all killed. We'll have them all killed. And and, and th I like what verse 10, how God refers to Haman now. And the king took his ring from his hand and gave it unto Haman, the son of Hamedith, the Haggai, the Agite, the Jews' enemy. He now has the title as the Jews' enemy. And the Jews, at this in this story, was the only, they were the remnant. They were the only people on earth that kept God's commandment and had the testimony of Jesus. And now, Haman wants to wipe them out. Kill them off. And that's how you know he was being used as a direct tool of the devil. This was the devil's way to get God's chosen people off the earth. They were the only ones who kept the commandments of God, who kept the Ten Commandments of God, and knew God as the true God. And Haman here, God gives him the, the title of the Jews' enemy. Who's the Jews' enemy? Who's the the Jews? Let's let's break this down. The Jews' enemy. Those three words. The Jews' enemy. The Jews back then was God's true church. So let's throw that in there. The true church's enemy. The true church's enemy. Who's the true church's enemy? The devil. The true church's enemy. Now you see how this is a mirror match of Revelation 12, 17. All right, but let's go a little further into the story. So when Mordecai hears this, when Mordecai hears it, but he and, and also he wanted to utterly destroy women, children, and that's in verse 13. Women, children, big, little, small. Haman wanted them utterly destroyed. He now had the spirit of Satan working through him. And that's in verse 13. Chapter 3, verse 13 says that. But anyway, let's go to chapter 4. When Mordecai hears this, you know how sometimes when you're doing right, you're doing what God commands you to do, and 
the repercussions start to come down and the devil is hurt. You know, sometimes we can blame ourselves, you know, or, or think that we might have did the wrong thing. But Haman knew he didn't do the wrong thing. He was just, he became very, I mean, Mordecai knew he didn't do the wrong thing. Excuse me, not Haman, but Mordecai knew he didn't do the wrong thing. But he became very remorseful because he knew this came from him not bowing down. He's not sorry for not bowing down, but he's sorry and he, and for uh, the repercussions that's going to happen to others. I'm pretty sure if, if the decree had just went to kill Mordecai, he wouldn't have dropped down. And walked through the city, ran his clothes with sackcloth and ashes. But the fact that all the Jews now were going to be killed, you know, it really hurt Mordecai's heart. And we see he didn't play, you know, he went straight to God. When, when, when Jews back then were sorrowful and repentant, they rent their clothes and they put sackcloth and ashes on them. And this is what Mordecai did. He went to straight to the Lord. You know, he went to the Lord and he showed that he he was not happy at all. He could have just said, Psh, you know, I did what God told me to do. You know, I ain't worried about it. Let him come kill us all. We, You know, God got us. Even though he did what God told us to do, Mordecai was so humble. And I could tell, you know, his heart was that he so cared for others that it still broke his heart about what was about to happen. And he went straight to the Lord. He went straight to the Lord. But check it out. Now it gets deep. Now it gets even deeper. Verse chapter four, verse one says, When Mordecai perceived all that was done, Mordecai rent his clothes and put on sackcloth with ashes, and went out into the midst of the city and cried with a loud and bitter cry. Bitter cry. And came even before the king's gate, for none might enter into the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. And in every province, whithersoever, the king's commandment and his decree came, there was great mourning among the Jews, and fasting and weeping and wailing, and many lay in sackcloth and ashes. So Esther's maids and her chamberlains came and told it her. Then was the king, I mean the queen, exceedingly grieved, and she sent raiment to clothe Mordecai and to take away his sackcloth from him. But he received it not. She tried to get him to stop. Like, what are you doing here? But he told, nope, Mordecai wouldn't do it. For he was, in a way, he was showing God. He was really, when they put on sackcloth and ashes, it's begging for God's mercy when it we really boils down to it. And he's pleading to God. Like I said, a bitter cry. He let bitter cry go. And it's really pleading to God. He's pleading to God. And even when, you know, when people come to us, how, how many times do we plead with the Lord? When when we know that the devil is coming at us and as do we do we actually plead, plead, or do we, you know, God help us uh, and we go about our day, are we pleading? Are we still crying to the Lord? You know, how how, how much are we crying and pleading to the Lord? And even here his queen, his daughter, the queen, his daughter even you know, tries to get him to stop. He will not stop. How many times have have people said, oh, it's, it's going to be all right. You know, stop feeling so down. And, woo -doo -woo. And, and you actually stop. When you're pleading with God, this lesson shows me personally, when you're pleading to the Lord, don't let no one deter you. You know, don't let no one deter you. But anyway, verse 5. Chapter 4, verse 5. Then called Esther for Hatak, one of the king's chamberlains, whom he had appointed to attend upon her, and gave him a commandment to Mordecai to know what it was and why it was. She wanted to know, why are you so down and 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 why are you doing this? So Hatak, Hatak went forth to Mordecai to the street of the city, which was before the king's gate. And Mordecai told him of all that had happened unto him and of the sum of the money that Haman had promised to pay to the king's treasure for the Jews to destroy them. Also, he gave him the copy of the writing of the decree that was given at Shushan to destroy them. 
to show it unto Esther and to declare it unto her and to charge her that she should go into the king to make supplication unto him and to make request before him for her people. And Hattak came and told Esther the words of Mordecai. Now check her response when Mordecai said, Now you should go and talk to the king for us because all the Jews had a decree just now went out to kill everybody, every Jew. Now remember, they don't know that she's a Jew yet. So she feels in her heart, she's she's straight. She's straight. They don't know I'm a Jew. Verse 10. Again, Esther spake unto her top and gave him commandment unto Mordecai. Verse 11. All the king's servant and the people of the king's provinces do know that whosoever, whether man or woman, shall come unto the king and to the inner court who is not called, there is one law of his to put him to death except such to whom the king shall hold out the golden scepter, that he may live. But I have not been called to come in unto the king these thirty days. So she basically said, I haven't been called. If you go in there, they're going to kill you. You know, if the king don't hold out the scepter, they're going to kill you. I haven't been called, so I'm basically not going to go. I'm basically not going to go. Verse 12, And they told to Mordecai Esther's words. Verse 13, Then Mordecai, Commanded to answer Esther. Look what he tells her. This is Mordecai. He says, Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape the king's house. Escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. He said, Don't think just because you're inside the palace that you're going to escape too. Verse 14. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. Meaning, God is going to save his people. And it's going to come from someone else. God will just get someone else to save his people. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this. He said, but you, deliverance, ch check what Mordecai just had to tell Esther, his daughter. He said, you, deliverance is going to come to Israel. He said, don't get it twisted. We are God's children. This is the remnant of his seed. The deliverance is going to come to God's people regardless. Whether you help or not. But if you don't help, you and your father's house will be destroyed. Will be destroyed. Do not get it twisted. And he said, then, but then he throws in the question to her to get her to think. He says, but, and who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? He said, basically saying, how do you know, how do you know that you weren't meant to be in the position you're at for this very thing. For this very thing. And look, verse 15. Then Esther bade them return Mordecai this answer. Verse 16. Go, gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan and fast ye for me. And neither eat nor drink three days, three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise, and so will I go unto the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went his way and did according to all that Esther commanded. So it was Mordecai. See, a lot of times we just, you know, we tend to, to, to believe or to just to have the belief that Esther, you know, once the decree went out, and Esther was like, okay, I'm going to save my people. I'm going to save my people. No. Mordecai basically Put the boot to her said, look, girly. But, you know, think about it. He raised her. He knew how to talk to her, too. He said, don't think. And he know her thinking, too. Like, don't think you could just hide up in that palace. Don't think you. And, and, and that's crucial because when you look at this as guys, we, remember, this mirror match is Revelation 12, 17. If we don't deliver God's message, his three angels' messages, to the lost, if we don't do God's will and God's work, God will deliver the people through some other way and some other means. Those people that he won't save, they will get saved. Sometimes, you know, people can get the big head. Yeah, I'm a Christian. I'm a seven and a half business, you know. And we get lackadaisical thinking God won't find some other way and means to save 
the loss. We're wasting time. If you're out wasting time, it's, it's sort of like he just told her, like Mordecai told Esther. Don't think that you can just sit up in your house and read your Bible and go to church. And you're not out reaching the lost and reaching the people. Because God will deliver those people that he won't save. And if he has to go through another means to do it, you and all of your house will be destroyed. But how do you know? I, I ask everyone who's listening that same question. But how do you know you weren't placed in the positions you are with the jobs you have, in the church you are, in the neighborhood you are, around the very people you know? For a time such as this, how do you know you wasn't placed where you are so you could specifically be the one to go and save those people and be blessed tremendously? But anyway, let's continue. So Esther goes into the king, like we know. And, but anyway, I want to pause right there and reinstate Esther. The one thing she did, and that's why I said hers was obedience. She 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 deserves credit for being obedient because she saw you see how she says in verse 16 go gather together all the Jews that are present in Shishan and fast ye for me and her and her man made his and fasted uh, three days and three nights she went to the Lord she knew she could not do it unless God was with her and that is a mentality and that is something that we need to continue to have every day of our lives that she knew she couldn't do it unless God was with her but anyway she goes in front of the king the king holds out the golden scepter I have matter of fact I, I did a lecture I think a year and a half ago and it's, it's on my channel page about how her going in in front of the king deals with prayer deals with prayer but anyway she goes in front of the king he holds out the golden scepter she's accepted she has a banquet for him he asks he's impressed he has her position petition what do you want she says you know come come eat with me one more night let me have another banquet you and Haman come to the banquet king says all right king says all right now I want you to check something this now this, that first banquet you know after the king said all right well me and Haman we'll come to another banquet of yours on the next night we'll sit with you eat with you you know we'll hang out basically we'll hang out you know, and then I can hear your request then. So Haman leaves the little party. He's happy. He doesn't know Mordecai raised Esther. Now he's happy because he's like, oh, the queen likes me. The queen likes me. He doesn't know the people you put the decree on is Esther's people. And the person that you hate, which is Mordecai, is like her daddy. That's her daddy. He don't know that. Now check the very next verse. Check verse 9. Haman just leaves the the, the the from hanging out with the king and the queen and he's crunk. He's like, Yeah, I'm I'm you know, he's full of himself right now. Verse nine. Then went Haman forth that day joyful and with a glad heart. But when Haman saw Mordecai in the king's gate, that he stood not up nor moved for him, he was full of indignation against Mordecai. Even though the decree went out, Mordecai still is not reverencing him and still not bowing down. Even though the decree has been set for him to die and for all his people to die, he is still not worshiping or serving the beast. If we look at it as far as Revelation 12, 13, especially Revelation 13, when the decree will go out, if you don't have the mark of the beast, you will be put to death. Mordecai is still not bowing down and still not reverencing and still not reverencing. But anyway. Look how God works. So that night, Artaxerxes couldn't sleep. He couldn't sleep. So like like I like to do a lot of times, I'll, I'll do some reading if I can't sleep, you know, after I do some praying. Because I figure that's the time God is waking me up. He wants to talk to me. So we'll pray. You know, I'll wake up and pray. But anyway, Ahasuerus, Xerxes couldn't sleep. You know, so he goes and, you know, he skims through the book. Probably hadn't read the book of the Chronicles of what the Chronicles, the book of Chronicles is what, you know, goes on through the kingdom. And he's so busy. He's like, yeah, let me do catch up on what's been going on in the kingdom. And that's chapter six. Let's go to chapter six. It says verse two. No, we'll read verse the first verse. Chapter six, verse one says on that night, 
could not the king sleep. And he commanded to bring the book of records of the chronicles. And they were read before the king. And it was found written that Mordecai had told of Bigthana and Teresh, two of the king's chamberlains, the keepers of the door who sought to lay hand on the king Ahasuerus. And the king said, what honor and dignity have been done to Mordecai for this? Then said the king's servants that minister unto him, there is nothing done for him. Have you noticed? This thought just hit me that even when the decree went out for all the Jews to be killed, Mordecai still didn't bring that up to the king. He went in the gate crying, King, I saved your life. How you going to kill us? He, he, he wasn't throwing that up or nothing. Throwing that up or nothing. But anyway, the king just read what Mordecai did. And he's like, no honor, no nothing was given to him, nothing was done for him. So in comes Haman. Now, Haman, when he went home that night, the night that the king couldn't sleep, he uh he told his wife and his friends, you know, his close little captains and whatnot, and they said, Why don't you build a, a gallow to hang Mordecai on? Won't you build it? And you know, and they constructed it that night to hang Mordecai. And now he's coming to the king. After the king just finds out that Mordecai saved his life, he's coming to the king to ask permission to hang Mordecai. Verse 4. And the king said, Who was in the court? Now Haman was coming to the outward court of the king's house to speak unto the king to hang Mordecai on the gallows he had prepared for him. So, you know, and you know, I'm summarizing. And so the king, the king says to Haman, you know. How should I honor in, in, the, in, the, in the man that I delighted in? And Haman thought he was talking about him. See, he told him Haman had the big head was full of stuff. So he thought the king was talking about him. So he, he, man, he said, why don't you get your best clothes, some of your personal clothes, uh, your crown, get your horse, you know, get your horse, one of your best horses. And why don't you parade? That man throughout the city. Let him ride your horse and have your gear on in front of everybody through the city so they know that he is highly favored by you. And Artisar sees, you know, this is right here, man. So he said, he said bet. That, that'll work. I like that. That's all right. That's a good idea. Well, why don't you do that? Then he says, verse 10. Then the king said to Haman, Well, make haste and take the apparel and the horse as thou hast said, and do even so to Mordecai the Jew. That sitteth at the king's gate. Let nothing fail of all that thou hast spoken. Then took Haman the apparel and the horse and arrayed Mordecai. And brought him on horseback through the street of the city. And proclaimed before him. I got to stop right there. Here, Mo here Haman hated Mordecai. This goes to show when you're faithful to the commandments of God. And you stand for what God has said. Your enemies will have no choice in the long run but to praise you God will cause your enemies to praise you <laughs> thus shall it be done unto the man whom the king delighteth and, to, uh, and Haman had to walk and scream it out Haman had to go with him and before the people through the streets and the one that had to glorify Mordecai <laughs> wow wow so again this happens and now the wise man and his wife, Haman's close friends, like, look, so you need to leave the Jews alone, try to take back the decree, because you're going to end up getting killed once the king finds out that these are Mordecai's people, not he, 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 he delights in Mordecai and he honors him. So he goes to the banquet, you know, that night. He ain't even really had time to really think or nothing. So he goes back to the second banquet, and Esther lets it be known. She pleads at this next banquet because the king is impressed again. And remember, he really loves this beautiful, his beautiful new wife. And he, she lets him know. She pleads for the life of all the Jews. And she lets him know that she's a Jew. And he said, and she lets him know about the scheme to kill off all the Jews. And he gets mad. And he asks, well, who did it? And he finds out, you know, that it was Haman. And so, you know, make a long story short, verse 10 Chapter 7, verse 10 says, So they hanged Haman on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. Then was the king's repast. So the very tool that he was planning on killing Mordecai with was the very thing he basically built it for himself and didn't even know it. He built it for himself and didn't even know it. So, of course, Esther then pleads for the letters that he wrote to be 
to be reversed and not only were they reversed but God but the, the king of Hasra said that the Jews could defend themselves rightly and justly and here Mordecai was uh, given even more honor and promoted in the long run he was promoted into Haman's spot he was right hand man right up under the king right hand man right up under the king and I want to show something when so when in all the provinces and through all the cities and kingdoms of Persia, when the Jews got word that they could defend themselves and more and the name of Mordecai started spreading through the land like wildfire, you know, Mordecai, when it started spreading through the land like wildfire, even the kings, let's read it, chapter 9, verse 3, and all the rulers of the provinces and the lieutenants and the deputies and officers of the king helped the Jews because the fear of Mordecai fell upon them. Verse 4, for Mordecai was great in the king's house, and his fame went out throughout all the provinces, for this man Mordecai waxed greater and greater, all because he kept the commandments of God, all because he mourned greatly for his people. All because he raised a good daughter. All because he did what was righteous in God's sight by taking his orphan cousin and raising her and loving her as she was his own. Let's go back to chapter 9. Look at verse 3. It says, because the fear of Mordecai fell upon him. Was it the fear of Mordecai? For who did Mordecai fear? God. Who was Mordecai a representative of? God's true church. God. And now let's put that in its proper perspective. Because the fear of God fell upon them. When you're willing to humble yourself before God and men and keep God's commandments, and put others above yourself. The same way Mordecai waxed greater and greater is the same way God will uplift you also. Now the Jews celebrate this, what happened by with a festival and a holiday called Purim, P-U-R-I-M. And, you know, a movie was made called A Night with the King. I haven't watched it. I need to check it out just to check it out. But a movie was made and uh, A Night with the King. So much the devil would love for everyone just to focus on Esther. But as we see Mordecai it was the loyalty it was the love and the fear of God of Mordecai that the Jews, that Esther, that the everything happened. It was Mordecai. What I learned from this, what I get from this, is let the devil be mad. God is in control. Keep God's commandments. John 14, 15, Jesus says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Humble yourself, beloved. Put others before you and keep the fear of God in front of your eyes and in your heart and in everything you do. And God will reward you. He might not reward you with riches. He might not reward you with earthly fame. But beloved, we don't know what heaven is like. I don't think our minds can imagine what Jesus created, you know. I don't think our minds can imagine the place that Jesus has prepared for us, that Jesus, God, and the Holy Spirit wants us all to be. Let me start rambling, because what I learned from Mordecai is a lesson to myself.
that no matter what, when the chips are down, and as we continue to get further in these last days, even if all the language and all the people of the earth bow down and reverence Haman, I will not bow down or reverence him. For that's all the devil wants is our worship. He wants our worship. Keep your eyes and your mind on Jesus, beloved. Get to know Jesus. Jesus. Don't just say you know him. Don't just go to church once a week. Get to know him personally by reading and studying. Spending time with him. Really get to know him. Really get to know him, beloved. For the days are short. And soon a decree will be made. A decree will be made. And then we'll see who really loves Jesus. Y'all take care. Amazing.